My wife and I were recently in Adelaide for some family events, and while we were there, we had to take a pilgrimage to the South Australian Museum. It might not surprise you if you've been watching this YouTube channel for a little while that museums are some of our favourite locations to visit while we're visiting new places. There's so much we can learn about the local place and just in general from visiting museums. They're a fantastic cultural spot. And last year we were in Adelaide for some family events and we had heard that Chile Australia's last flamingo had been taxidermized and was going to be on display at the Museum of South Australia. So naturally, we felt drawn, we went to visit, and Chile was not there. Just look at the disappointment on my wife's face. That is how we were feeling. But this time was different. Australia's last flamingo. Let's talk about her. Why were we so excited about this dead flamingo? And what do I mean by that this was Australia's last flamingo? Why are there no flamingos in Australia? Well, we're going to get to those things. Australia's history with flamingos actually goes back further than you might expect to around 20 million years ago. In our fossil record across different parts of Australia, there is lots of evidence that shows that flamingos once lived in Australia, but due to changing climate and their vast lakes drying up, they disappeared from the continent. Some people actually consider flamingos to be Australian birds, and you might find them in some Australian bird handbooks. And there is evidence that Australia had up to six species of flamingo living here at some point natively, including the greater flamingo, which is Africa's main flamingo species. But this stopped when they all disappeared around a million years ago. But in the 1800s, zoos began importing them. One of Adelaide's zoo's oldest exhibits was the Flamingo Pond. This photo from the 1920s shows Adelaide Zoo's flock, and it is possible that one of the taxidermied flamingos is in this photo. The flamingo that is on display with Chile is greater. Yes, its name is greater because it is a greater flamingo, which when considering that Chile is called Chile because she's a Chilean flamingo, it puts little doubt into the naming convention that Adelaide Zoo uses to name its flamingos. Anyway, Greater was, as far as records show, the oldest flamingo in the world in captivity when he died at the age of 83. Ish. He might have been older. There were several imports of greater flamingos to Adelaide Zoo in the early 1900s, but because record keeping wasn't awesome, by the time greater was in his later years, nobody knew which shipment he was a part of. Anyway, over the course of the 20th century, Australia introduced more and more strict biosecurity laws, which made many animals such as flamingos difficult to import. So Chile was among the last flamingos imported to Australia in the 1970s. Since 1982, Chile and Greater shared a pond as the only two flamingos in Adelaide Zoo. And for quite a while, they were the last remaining flamingos in Australia. Greater died due to old age in 2014, and Chile's zookeeper didn't think she'd last much longer. Flamingos are social animals and live in large flocks, but Chile lived another few years, eventually being humanely euthanized in 2018 due to her deteriorating health condition. She was in her 60s, which is far beyond the standard life expectancy for a Chilean flamingo, which is about 50 years. But for these animals, death was not the end of their story. 
This is where a man named Joe Bain comes into the story. Joe has been working with the South Australian Museum as a taxidermist and model maker since he was 15 and is responsible for many of the items on display in the museum. He wanted to preserve greater when he died in 2014 and pestered Adelaide Zoo to donate Greater's body to the museum. The zoo did, and Joe got to work preserving the magnificent bird. When Chile died in 2018, the zoo thought it would be fitting for the birds who had been each other's only companions for over 30 years to be preserved and put on display together. So they sent Chile's body to Joe and he got to work. Now, taxidermy is quite an art, literally. It takes an enormous amount of skill to preserve a creature while also making it seem alive in all of its vivid and accurate detail. Some time ago, Vsauce published a video about why we don't taxidermy humans which details how taxidermy, even of cats and dogs, can go wrong. One of my favorite Facebook pages, yes, somehow, I'm still on Facebook, is Crap Taxidermy. There are a lot of mediocre taxidermists, but Joe Bain is not one of them. I'm not going to go into all the details, but to simplify, taxidermy generally involves taking the skin of a dead animal and mounting it on a frame so that it resembles the animal it came from. It's difficult to taxidermy pets pleasingly because without all the bones and flesh remaining, it's difficult to give the animals its proper familiar shape and face. So pets often look uncanny if taxidermized. Anyway, flamingos are not easy to taxidermy, turns out. Not least because they have very long, very skinny and veiny legs. It took some time to do, but I think the results speak for themselves. I was amazed at the condition and detail that both Chile and Greater have. And it's lovely that they can be on display to educate about flamingos. In the spirit of educating about flamingos, here's a rapid fire about some of my favorite flamingo facts. Ready? Okay, let's go. Flamingos get their pink color because of the algae in the brine shrimp that they often feed on. In fact, Chile turned orange when her diet was adjusted. Flamingos knees don't bend backwards. It's actually their ankle joints. A group of flamingos is called a flamboyance. Flamingos legs are incredible. The water they live in is often extremely salty and it burns skin. But flamingo skin is tough enough that it can withstand this corrosion. But it's not unusual for flamingo chicks to die because of all the salt and mineral buildup on their legs and they can't walk. It's very sad. Flamingos can fly and they are majestic. Just look at them. Will Australia always be without flamingos? Maybe. It is possible to import them, but due to Australia's strict biosecurity laws, the process takes many years, and that's often too much bother for zoos to go through. But if they do make it back to Australia, rest assured that I will be visiting the next flamingos in Australia in the zoos that they are in. And honestly, I don't mind that there aren't any here in Australia. Due to its geographical isolation, as this massive island, it has a lot of unique life and so it's important to preserve it. It's difficult to do so and colonisation has really made a mess of things, but I'm glad we are making efforts to protect the ecosystems that are here now. In this regard, anyway, I'm not going to talk about mining or deforestation in this video. I think that Chile and Greater are really cool. I think that Joe Bain, the taxidermist, is extremely talented to be able to preserve these birds in such a way and I love that they will go on for many years as a tool to educate about flamingos and life on this amazing planet. I think that being able to preserve things for education in the future is such a valuable and special thing and it was a real treat to be able to see these birds. I told my colleagues that this was one of the things my wife and I did on our trip and they couldn't quite understand my excitement, but I hope that you can. Let me know in the comments what you think about Chile, flamingos and taxidermy in general. If you'd like to see more videos where I explore things that inspire me with a sense of curiosity and wonder, please consider subscribing to That's Pretty Cool. Thanks again for watching, take care, stay curious, and I'll see you next time.